Yo, yo, yo guys, what is going on? Welcome back to my channel, Alex Pangea here. And in today's video, we're gonna teach you a pretty visual color change. It uses a fan to perform the color change, hence the name, the fan change. Now there's so many color changes out there, so question of the day today is what is your favorite color change or what would you like me to teach as a color change because I know it's one of the most popular things that people request here on this channel. Teach color change, color change, visual color change. So go ahead, leave your comments below and I read every comment so I'll be sure to take a look at it and maybe add it to the list. Now I know you guys like visual color changes so this one is no exception. Let's get straight into the technique on how to perform it. All right, here we go with the fan change. Now, the fan change was one of the first color changes that I learned. I think it was maybe the second or third one after the snap change. What I like about it is that you could play around with a lot of different things. For example, the angle, uh, the distance between the fan and the actual change. So you could really make it seem like nothing is going close to this left-hand packet when the change happens, when the fan comes over it. Um, so there's a lot of different variations that you could play around with and uh, use to your preference. So the first thing that you're gonna want to learn is the one hand fan and you're gonna need to learn this because uh, if you don't do this properly then the fan could get really messy when you're gonna go and steal out a card for it to be changed so make sure that you just get down a one hand fan it's really not that hard to do if you've never done it before here's just a basic of it you place your two fingers your first finger of your right hand and your pinky out like this so that you could grab the packet just like that by placing half the packet because we're only going to do it with half the packet into the right hand pinky first finger grab like this and then the thumb is going to go to the bottom right hand corner of what you're looking at and start spreading out and as you push out that's what's going to happen is that the curve is going to shape the fan starting from the top over here now it's not enough just to push with the thumb you're gonna also need to pull with your fingers as well. So the fingers of the right hand are pulling at the same time as you're pushing with the thumb. So when you put all that together, it's here, push with the thumb upwards, pull with the fingers down, and you're gonna get a one hand fan. And you wanna do that sort of in motion so that it is even, okay? So once you have the one hand fan down, what's going to happen is you're gonna to need to steal off the bottom card, which in this case is the ace of spades right there, the bottom card of the right hand packet, and you're gonna to need to steal that off with the left hand, okay? So we're just gonna work with the right hand first, step number one, and then we're gonna look at how to put it together with the left hand. So what you're going to do, the first step here, is gonna to start to move the bottom card with your right hand fingers, all right? Once the fan is taking place, so this is done underneath so nobody sees, you're gonna to start to move it with these fingers. It's almost like you do that old gag of here, please pick a card and you take out that bottom card. Sometimes it's done with a fan where that one card gets pushed out and you go, hey, please just take anyone that you want as a gag. I never do that though, because I think that's kind of silly. But nonetheless, you can sort of see the idea behind it by separating out that bottom card and you're going to sort of get it so it moves around like that, all right? So how we do that is literally as follows. You're gonna move with mainly, I guess, the middle finger right there. The middle finger is going to push it out so it separates from the rest of the fan. And then using your other fingers, you're going to, and I, like I said, for me at least, it's mainly the middle finger. So mainly the middle finger for you, it might be something else, but nonetheless, play around with it, see what's comfortable for you to get that card separated. See, sometimes it's going to sort of come apart and swivel around. That's okay for this color change because you're gonna use your left hand to put it into place, but just get used to doing this separating it out with the fingers and so that it is sort of loose and it could move around, okay? It's okay if a few other cards get loose at this point because you'll see you'll be able to fix it with the left hand, all right? So that is step number one. One hand fan with half the deck, get that one card, just push it up like that and you're free from the fan and you could steal it out. Step number two is using the left hand to steal out the card. Now, how do we get into the position of all of this? So you start off with the deck and let's say I dribble, okay? Or you can just do this. This would be the sort of easier way because you can go from here to the exact positioning of what that left hand needs to be in. 
but nonetheless you could also dribble just like this and then turn over the packet with the right hand's fingers just like that to show the card. Okay, so whatever is in the context of what you're doing, whatever is easier for you, those are the two ways to sort of get into it. So that's the position that you want to be in. Now with the left hand, notice that the fingers of the left hand, the middle, ring, and pinky, are on the bottom over here. Now that's going to play an important role because that's going to help steal off that bottom card that now we know how to do, right? We have to kick that out and it's gonna help steal that bottom card by using pressure, placing that bottom card on the tips of the fingers, just like that, and now your right hand moves away as your left fingers keep pressure right here on the bottom, keep pressure and hold that into play. So that is going to be the position of where you want that card right before it, it's going to be changed. So again, from here, riffle, get into this position any which way you want, fan out the cards, boom, pop this open, left fingers are ready to go, takes that card just like this and moves the right hand away, and the right hand now is going to be blocking this position. So it's going to be blocking it like that. And this is where it becomes not necessarily hard, but you just have to play around with the angles and where the audience is standing, how many people are here, are you surrounded or not, because obviously this is a, not the best angle for it. So you want to sort of be boom like that. But nonetheless, this is for you to kind of get a behind the scenes scene of how it should look for you when doing it. From here, all you have to do to make the change happen is close the fingers and let that one card go flush to the packet. Now you don't want to do it too fast because what's going to happen is if you do it too fast, then it might not go square and then you might fidget too much with the left hand. The idea is to not get too much motion with this left hand, right? So it's here, here, expose view, and then this changes. So you would, what you're going to want to practice first is just this, okay? Take the card, place it here, move away, and then just kind of do that. Then you're gonna work on the timing so that it fans in front of it and it changes. Cause you're gonna want, obviously, the two things to happen simultaneously so that the change takes place. But the most important part of that is to get this flush with the deck so that you don't have any of this going on. When the change happens, you want it squared up. All right, the one tip that I have for doing this is to dribble here, do the one hand fan, place this in position, show the seven just like that, kind of wave first, and as you come to wave, that's when you're gonna do the setup. So I wave once, show the seven. As I talk to the spectator now, do I get my card in position, come here with the fan, come a little bit further away, and when I'm ready to do the change, that's not it. Also, you don't want that happening. So do practice on the balance, I guess. When you're ready for the change to happen, you're here, you come up, the change happens, you come down automatically and you want your fingers back into this position. You don't want this to happen from here to here and keep your fingers like that. You want your fingers back like that after the change took place. So boom, boom, and boom. So that's it, really easy color change. If you're gonna want to do it to a selected card, what you're gonna wanna do is have a card selected and control to the bottom of the pack. And then from here, you're gonna wanna do a kick cut or a swing cut like this. And then the bottom packet, which is the right hand packet, now has the selected card in the position for you to do the change. So then you could come out here, show the indifferent card, and then change it to the selected card. And then you could get that visual change in the context of a routine. One thing to keep in mind with this color change is not only the distance between the spectator's eyes and the deck, but the distance of the right hand's fan between the spectator's eyes and the deck, right? So in between, there's the fan. Is it closer to the spectator's eyes? Is it closer to the deck? Is it too close to the deck? Is it too far away? Can they not see the whole deck? So things like that are the things that you wanna play around with when learning this color change. I think for me at least, what would be cool is to do the get ready and then get pretty far away with the fan so that it looks like it doesn't even come in contact at all with the deck. So you're really far away with it and then the change happens. But then of course, that is 
this, the, you know, the angle and everything is all is going to be taken into account when doing this change. But I think it's something fun to play around with and see how far you can push it. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. That would mean a lot to me. And I think it will mean a lot to the YouTube algorithm because I heard that they like that button hit. Boom, right there. So go ahead, do that if you don't mind, and subscribe if you haven't already, because we have a lot more cool things on the way on this channel. A lot of cool tutorials, theory, and much, much more. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and we will see you on the next video. Peace.